Okay, good morning, everyone. As we have already met, I'm Monjit Bhadakur, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography from Cotton University. So today in the first session, we are going to discuss the basis of geodesy and spatial referencing system. So this uh, basis of geodesy and spatial referencing system, we are going to discuss the learning objective will be uh, to understand the complexities regarding the shape and size of the earth and uh, to understand the different measurement framework to measure the uh, art, you know, its radius, circumference and all and uh, the different models, okay, referencing models for uh, our coordinate system and the, to understand the use of coordinate system in GIS. So, shape and size of the art, the particular science which actually deals with the shape and size of the art is known as a geodesy, we all know. Uh, if you see that the, you know, right from the Greek period, okay, the philosophers, then Greek mathematicians, they try to, you know, understand their known art, okay, and some of them, few of them, they had the opinion that the art is a perfect sphere. Prior to that, it was also thought that art was a flat, you know, dislike structure, okay. But the simplest model, if you try to understand geometrically, the simplest model of the art is a sphere, okay, and which is also used for small scale mapping. Small scale mapping means if we wish to map large areas, for instance, suppose we wish to um, map uh, the huge continent or uh, the Indian subcontinent or suppose uh, America or this part of Africa then small scale mapping we can work with a spherical model of the art which is also known as a otelic sphere why I am going to explain in my subsequent slides but the better approximation we all know that art is not a you know perfect sphere but it's an ellipsoidal shape where we have a polar flattening and the equatorial bulging right so uh, these were the philosophers particularly that ellipsoidal idea of the art okay was given by isaac newton in uh, you know in 17th century and he for the first time said that the, this ellipsoid is an oblate ellipsoid Oblate means where you have a north and south uh, flat ring and um, you know no, east and west bulging. So this is an oblate sphere. Now, uh, now the question will be that whether sphere or ellipsoid, which we are going to consider in GIS, as I have already mentioned, if we are going to consider the spherical art for small scale mapping, mapping the large areas, then the average radius of the globe we are going to consider 6371 kilometer why it doesn't make any difference if we take a spherical art while mapping the large areas because in case of the large areas that means a small scale mapping the difference between the polar and equatorial radius is not going to affect our calculation so that's why if we wish to but suppose we are interested to mapping a some part of Assam like for instance this university campus or for instance suppose a small hamlet then the spherical model of the art is not going to be useful because in that case we have to consider the curvature of the art. So for that we have to con go with this ellipsoidal model. Now if you see that here A is your equatorial radius b is your polar radius and your equatorial radius which is a is 6378.13 kilometer whereas your polar radius is 6356.75 kilometer that means that there is a difference of almost 21.3 to be precise between the equatorial radius and polar radius because here we are considering the ellipsoidal model of the art okay but for a larger use for geodetic survey, we are talking about in terms of mapping, okay, GIS mapping. But if we wish to incorporate the geodetic maps, that means the field survey map, then ellipsoidal geoidal model of the art is the perfect shape, okay. It is a very close approximation of the real world. Perfect means a close approximation of the real world. Now, this ellipsoid is a reference surface here 
if we are going to consider the ellipsoid because you see that why we are you know taking ellipsoid as a close approximation of the arch shape because see that ellipsoid is also a perfect geometric figure okay it has a smooth surface and here we can do the calculation but the art is not smooth okay there are the you know big mountains like everest there are deep trenches like the mariana trenches so there is a ups and downs the ellipsoidal model it's not going to take care of these you know uh, anomalies in terms of the height of the art okay but the geoidal model does so that's why ellipsoidal model is largely used for your uh, horizontal positioning whereas the geoidal is used for vertical positioning that means the ellipsoid will be used for the latitudinal and longitudinal measurement in the ellipsoidal and geoidal model of the art where geoid will be considered for your vertical that means the elevation altitude okay where you are going to get the precise altitude measurements so this is a perfect uh, model that means it's a close to the approximation of the art as a uh, sphere or ellipsoid now in case of the ellipsoid we have to understand that this ellipsoid is actually obtained by rotating okay a meridian ellipse about its minor axis now we all know that the the arc axis where it rotates actually is this one this is the minor axis and this axis is also your uh, arc spin axis okay and this one this is known as a semi minor axis so the equatorial one is known as a semi major axis or major axis if we consider the you know the entire circumference and this polar one is as a semi minor axis or a minor axis okay so one part of is of it it's known as a semi semi minor and semi major axis okay now this minor axis is coincide with the art spin axis okay because art is also spinning the major axis is actually swipe out the equatorial plane as an ellipse is rotated so basically this is the idea of newton as the art is rotating in its axis okay so the basic idea is that due to the centrifugal forces the east and west that means the equatorial must be you know bulge out okay so this is this is the idea and which is also you know the correct you know it's proved to be correct from that you know space observation nl all we came to know that yes this is a perfect or close approximation of the art model okay now moving forward you see that this ellipsoidal model i am only always i'm trying to refer it as a ellipsoidal model why because there are n number of ellipsoids okay the ellipsoid is definitely is going to be a global model that means it it is going to make the art uh, trying to measurement art axis measurement that means the semi major and semi minor axis so if you clearly see that the, i have just mentioned here few of the official ellipsoids now here you clearly see that there are 1 uh, 2 3 4 5 ellipsoids and if you try to understand that equatorial radius and polar radius in each of this model okay they differ slightly okay because these are modeling okay so the most widely used ellipsoidal model of the art is world geodetic system 84 wgs 84 and here the equatorial radius is 6378137 polar one is 6356752 and the measurement for the flattening of the polar areas is known as a polar flattening okay and how we can achieve it the polar flattening which is also known as an obliqueness because as i have already mentioned that this sphere is a oblique sphere so that obliqueness can be measured by f is equal to a means the your equatorial radius b means the polar radius and divided by a then we are going to get the polar flattening and this polar flattening is always expressed as a ratio 1 by f so here you can see these all these models there is a difference in the polar flattening okay because there are different models based on their approximations okay they were created but most widely used uh, ellipsoidal model is wgs84 why it's a global reference system and nowadays in all our gps gnss they are using the wgs84 reference okay for art measurement now next question is a datum okay 
this is a data means a reference okay for measurement on the up surface okay so this data is basically nothing but a coordinate system which actually provide us the basis for or reference for our measurement measuring x y and z coordinate that means latitude longitude and altitude okay so the there are the datum parameters as i have already mentioned it is going to deal with the art shape and size so the major axis minor axis their orientation rotation you know translation and ellipsoidal height is going to be the reference for the datum okay but here we have to see that there are two types of data actually one is your horizontal data and another one is your vertical data as i have already mentioned the horizontal measurements will give us the x and y coordinate that means the latitude and longitude informations and the vertical one is going to give us the heights okay so this horizontal data is basically is a collection of specific points on the earth that have been identified according to their latitude and longitude this is horizontal data so any data point you are going to consider if it is a horizontal data it will be based on the latitude and longitude measurements the vertical data is a bit tricky concept to understand why because it is a collection of specific point on the earth surface with their known heights above and below mean sea level now here is a new concept the mean sea level though we are using in our day to day life the msl msl but this idea of msl is a very tricky idea because you see whenever i have to say about like mean sea level the suppose the coastal areas okay so there the tidal heights we can consider for the mean sea level but what about the areas where there is no sea how you are going to get the mean sea level okay so to solve that problem the geodetic scientist has made a uh, art model okay for us to get the mean sea level at any point point on the art surface and the concept in details can be understood through this particular video so i'd like to request you to please go through this video in youtube i have also provided the link here okay so this is about the vertical data which is a bit tricky concept to understand now there are another two things we have to deal in which is the geodetic data and the local geodetic data there are two types more two types of data one is geocentric and one is local geodetic data now geocentric data is actually if we have to say it's a global data because in the geocentric data it has considered the art center as its origin so as we are using for instance the wgs84 okay it's a global data so here i am going we are going to consider the art center as the origin okay but in a local data is a best approximation of the size and shape of a particular part of the art or uh, i mean land or sea surface so this local data is actually based on some local measurements okay because you see as i have already mentioned your global data is not suitable to get a uh, to help you for large scale mapping that means the for the small areas because there we are not go, we will not be able to understand or get the measurements for the vertical differences that altitudes okay because here yeah, the global data will give you a general that means average elevation globally but when if you are interested for a small scale mapping where your height matters okay for suppose a road project or railway project where you have to go for art cutting or land filling in that case 1 meter 2 meter difference will be a huge difference for that reason we need this local geodetic data there are few examples of this local geodetic data like uh, net 27 not american data or the european data or indian geodetic data as a kalyanpur in central india as the point of reference okay kalyanpur uh, uh, kalyanpur data it is also known as a popularly kalyanpur data the great trigonometric survey actually used that data for mapping uh, the indian subcontinent so this is the indian geodetic data for the measurement in the indian subcontinent okay so here if you wish to go for a small scale mapping you only have to understand that you will get you have to get the height information that means the vertical measurements on the basis of this local data for your horizontal measurements it is okay if you are dealing with that uh, you know global data 
Okay, that is WGS84 will give you also a close approximation. Now next, after this shape and size, the next concept to understand is a coordinate system. Okay, we all are familiar with this coordinate system, right? This coordinate system is a reference used for representing the um, location on the geographic features. Basically, it's a framework of latitude and longitude. Okay. So here the unit of measurement is used for global geographic coordinates system for latitude and longitudes. Basically coordinate systems, we have two types of coordinate system. One is your geographic and another one is your projected coordinate system. Now we have to deal with this geographic one. Now this geographic coordinate system is a reference system for identifying locations on the curved surface of the earth. Okay, so this is a geographic coordinate system. So here, the location on the earth surface are measured in angular units from the center of the earth relative to the two planes. There are two planes basically. Why, you know, doing the measurements in a geographic uh, coordinate system. Geographic and projected I am dealing with. Okay. So in case of geographic coordinate system, we are talking about two planes for the angular measurements. You see, we have two planes. For the measurements, we know that latitude and longitudes are going to be the x, y coordinates. Okay. For the latitudes, that means the parallels, our plane will be the equatorial plane. Okay. So, the angle formed by a particular line drawing from the center of the earth to the equator, any point on the equator, and another line from the center of the earth to any point on the parallel, that angle will be the angular measurement for the parallel that means as we if we say the 10 degree north 10 degree south that means that particular parallel is from forming a 10 degree angle at the center of the earth okay so here the plane will be the equator now in the second case where for our longitudinal measurements okay there our plane will be the prime meridian so two, two plane basically we are talking about. So the angle between the prime meridian and the respective longitude will be the angular measure for longitudinal measurement. So two planes, basically we are dealing with the two planes because these are angular measurements. Okay. So this is about the geographic coordinate system. Now what about the projected coordinate system? You see, why do we need the projected question, project, uh, coordinate system? First question. Because... As I have already mentioned, this geographic coordinate system is actually the curvature of the, it, it, it has taken consideration of the curvature of the earth. But for our day to day measurements, planning, surveying, we are going to deal with a two dimensional surface. Okay? Now this projected coordinate system actually converted the geographic coordinate system into a two dimensional surface. So that's why we need this. Okay, so here the coordinate system will be uh, defined on a flat two dimensional surface. Okay, and here the coordinate system has a constant like length, angle, area. So area measurement, length measurement for that we need this two dimensional projection system which is known as a projected coordinate system. Okay, the basis is obviously the geographic coordinate system, but here we are going to do the calculations. That's why we have converted into a two dimensional surface. Most popular one here is the universal transverse marketers projection, UTM projection. Okay, conformal projection where we can do the measurements accurately. Okay, universal transverse marketers projection, and, and the entire world is divided into some zones. Okay, the details is there in your uh, text resource. Please go through it. The universal transverse marketers projection. Now, the third one here we have to going to discuss is a planar coordinate system. Basically, this is a part of projected coordinate system only. Why it is known as a planar coordinate system? Because here we are going to project the earth on a plane. That means on a two-dimensional surface. Now. Whenever we are trying to project the earth on a two-dimensional surface, we know that two-dimensional surface can touch a single point on the earth surface. Okay? Now, if the two-dimensional surface is touching the polar areas, then our planar coordinate system will be polar. 
if it is touching the equatorial area then it is going to be the equatorial or it can also touch any parallels in between okay this particular projection planar coordinate system party specifically is also known as a azimuthal or zenithal projection okay now if you are for suppose in the first figure we know the plane of projection is touching the north pole okay now then this particular projection will be known as polar zenithal projection okay or polar azimuthal projection okay if it is touching the equator then it is going to be a zenithal projection equatorial case okay or zenithal projection oblique case if it is touching any parallels in between the equator and the north pole or south pole okay now here another important point is this that this particular projection is normally obtained by using source of light okay whenever you are using the source of light it is based on your perspective okay that is known as a perspective projection now if we are have to suppose there is a you know network of reticles here and we want to project the network of reticles on this particular plane surface okay now light can be placed in different positions okay for in suppose that this particular surface is a light sensitive surface and we are allowing the shadows to fall on that particular surface and it is taking the imprint and in that way we are going to get the coordinate systems the network of coordinates now there are three possibilities for perspective the first possibility is that that you can place the light at the center okay or you can place the light opposite to the plane of projection so it can be placed at the center or just opposite if it is in the north pole then it is go the light will be placed on the south pole okay or if it is placed equatorial case the opposite side of the equator plane okay this is one possibility or the light can be placed anywhere in the infinity away okay so there are three possibilities so on the basis of these three possibilities if we place the light at the center that means if our perspective is at center then that particular projection will be mnemonic okay then it will be polar zenithal mnemonic projection okay now if we are placing the light at opposite of the plane of projection then it will be polar zenithal this group is known as a stereographic then it is going to be stereographic okay and last one is your orthographic where we are going to place the light at infinity so you see on the basis of the you know placement of the light that means the perspective your projection is going to be different okay this is a polar case that's why your uh, parallels are coming as a circles concentric circles and meridians as a straight line so if, you, if you, in, in case of your poles if the light is placed center or opposite or at infinity all the parallels will be projected as a concentric circle <coughs> and the meridians will be straight line radiating from the center okay so see on the basis of your perspective the projection is going to be different why do we need them for different use okay like for stereographic or mnemonic there are different use of this group of projection so that's why we place the perspective at different places thank you